Ouch. That's pretty rough. Give it a shot. Uh, so, the subject of today's video is going to be essentially starting from where we began this whole channel and that is another cast iron skillet restoration job. This one is particularly special because it is by far the single worst cast iron skillet I have ever seen, whether pictures online or in person. It's a train wreck and we're going to do everything we can to get it back into good condition. So stay tuned and enjoy the show. So here is our subject for this video. This is an as yet unidentified number eight cast iron skillet. It's identified as a number eight because that's about the only identifying mark I've got so far. There's a clear number eight here and it look, looks like a Z, pretty clear Z right above it. Um, we have the fire ring around it with the signature three notches, one at 12 o'clock, three o'clock, and nine o'clock, which we see on lodges. That was featured on the uh, number seven SK lodge that we began this whole channel with back in uh, October of 2020. But something that really is a deviation from lodge, at least what I've seen, uh, both in modern and antique examples, is the pour spouts. So I've got my number seven right here Let's compare the pour spouts that we see on this one versus that one. So, judging by my thumb, you can see this pour spout's almost at the top. It's pretty much double the width of my thumb. A pretty substantial, very generous pour spout. Now, let's look at our lodge. That pour spout is the width of my pinky. It's sorry. So this antique version, which is ballpark 1950s, um, is exactly the same as my lodge that I bought when I was in graduate school. The pour spout is nothing more than a dent and it's really useless. Unless, you know, it kind of helps when you're pouring grease out, but if you've got something, you know, more viscous than that, then it's, it's not doing anything at all. It's completely pointless. Oh, but also, this is what I mentioned earlier. I've got our fire ring with three notches at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. We have our number 7, which appears to be a very different font. It's a, a wider font. And we have our SK underneath it. And I don't know what this H means. But SK refers to skillet. Um, you'll see that on modern day skills. If you go to Walmart or, you know, Blaine's Farm and Fleet or something like that and you buy a brand new lodge skillet you'll see a number corresponding to the size and the SK for skillet obviously. So back to our subject we have a number eight that's it's definitely a different style font it's a very fine um, groove that makes up the number itself the character itself um, so I'm not 100% sure if this is maybe an early lodge when they used to make really nice pour spouts back in the day perhaps and um, when they started automating the process of pouring cast iron skillets maybe they dropped that and went to the little dents I don't know uh, but anyway the real the real challenge that's ahead of us it's a creosote job here ladies and gentlemen um, it is truly astonishing um, you know this this video is going to be priceless for what I hope to be the finished product of the skillet just to see where this thing is coming from you know our our T0 or time zero as, as we consider in in scientific work the creosote buildup here is in many areas I would say more than three millimeters thick it's truly incredible um, and that's that's the outside obviously the inside not much better, but still we see a creosote layer that's substantial all over the walls of the skillet. 
Now what you don't see is you don't see creosote buildup on the bottom of the skillet here, the inside or the outside of the skillet. So what happens is when that burns, all that creosote, that tar, is vaporized and the bottom of the skillet here, because this is directly above your flame, your heat source, and the inside of the skillet is obviously the other side of that, these two surfaces are too hot for that creosote to condense onto the metal and become a, a buildup situation. Conversely, the walls of the skillet being removed from the immediate um, you know, incidence of heat, they are colder and therefore they are at the at or below the condensation point for creosote and that's why the creosote ultimately condenses on the walls of the skillet both inside and outside and results in a buildup over over the years of use so this thing i would postulate was used quite frequently and probably over a pine or softwood uh, burning either wood stove or maybe it was you know widely used outside in a campfire context uh, but one way or another, it's it's rough. So we also see uh, an issue that, uh, let me pause this here, I'll take you over to my, my oven, my stove top. And what I saw with this skillet is, it's not sitting flat. So the skillet has the fire ring around it. Um, part of the reason that that's there is to stabilize it. The other part is of course for it to um, sit above a specific size fire ring that's for the skillet. In this case, it'd be a number eight fire ring. There were concentric sizes of fire rings over uh, wood burning stoves back in the day. Now, this is something that you can't really fix, um, not in not in terms of fixing the metal itself. You might think you can grind that that bump away. That's obviously a raised portion here on the, the central bottom of the skillet, but we can't do that because if you take material away from here, you're going to make this area thinner and you'll have a, a hot spot and you'll risk the structural integrity of it. You might break through. And the other thing you might think, because it's metal and I also do blacksmithing, is hey, maybe you can heat it up and hammer on it. Uh, no. You cannot forge cast iron. It will just crumble. Um, I've tried it on a piece of scrap cast iron when I was very young in my blacksmithing days and there's no heat at which you can forge cast iron. It just crumbles to pieces. So our only option to fix the wobble in order to make this thing an effective functional piece of cookware on our stove. Um, and I thought of this on my own, kind of proud of it, I think it's a pretty good idea, is put three dots at 120 degrees of separation on our fire ring and those dots will be from brazing so it'll be bronze it should be able to take the heat of the stove no problem and uh, we'll have it positioned at six o'clock uh, two o'clock and ten o'clock and I think that should be our 120 degrees of separation and um, that becomes effectively a tripod those dots really only need to be probably two millimeters tall it should be all that I need to overcome the the convexity here that's uh, preventing us from sitting flat. So, once we get everything cleaned up, then we'll work on the next part will be um, soldering on, or sorry, brazing on those dots in order to give us a stable uh, surface to sit on. So, Roto brand household 100% lye drain opener. You can hear this is a solid sodium hydroxide. Even to myself, a chemist, we purchase sodium hydroxide commonly as solid pellets uh, unless we want standardized solutions for uh, various chemistry, which is quite common as well. But this is solid state, 100% concentrated sodium hydroxide. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a solution, um, 200 grams of this in a half liter of water and then that half liter of water should be enough to uh, to soak our skillet. We're going to do the plastic bag method that we did on the Griswold. So we'll go ahead and uh, get going on that and we'll bring you along. All right so I figured a sensible approach would be to do some do as much mechanical removal of the, the crud on this thing as, as possible 
without number one damaging the underlying iron and two you know without making too much of a mess uh, largely the purpose of it is to try and get rid of the creosote that we can flake off of here just to make the the job for our lye bath uh, that much easier so I'm going to go to town on this thing with uh, this coarse wire brush this is a, a welding brush and it's not going to damage the underlying steel uh, sorry cast iron uh, but it should uh, effectively remove the rust and maybe some of the the creosote builder that we have on here so be right back all right so here's real quick uh, just about three minutes of um, hitting it with that wire brush and I'm really happy with what I see frankly um, I can I can see bare metal in, in a lot of areas and I don't see substantial pitting which I was really concerned with uh, you know I was afraid that the rust would leave uh, maybe it was really bad and left a lot of deep pitting in the metal which would you know not really do us any favors when it came to cooking on the thing all right ladies and gentlemen so we've got our bucket um, it's got our plastic bag with our cast iron skillet in the bag and the 10 molar sodium hydroxide solution in the bag and then again we filled the we put the bag with the skillet in it in the bucket fill the bucket with water and that forces all the air out so that our 10 molar sodium hydroxide solution is making entire contact with the skillet so at this point it's just a waiting game um, they're going to add a little bit more water in there um, this bucket isn't quite deep enough to fit the entire skillet so like the handle is exposed so we're just going to have to do the best we can uh, I'll probably see how it progresses and then rotate the thing to get the handle on the bottom so that gets you know exposed and cleaned as well um, but yeah at this point it's it's just a waiting game so the reason why I had to prep the solution off camera is um, two reasons one it has to be done outside or in a well ventilated area because making a very high concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide gives off pretty nasty fumes so you know they'll be a respiratory uh, irritant so that was done outside and currently it is exceedingly windy outside um, fortunately it's not very cold but it is windier than heck so there's no way i could have filmed out there because it would have literally blown my camera over uh, so i prepped it outside uh, like i said it's 200 grams of sodium hydroxide and water but be very very careful i you know don't don't try this at home uh, i am a chemist as a professional i've gone to graduate school, undergraduate school, I have quite a few years of training in chemistry so I know what I'm doing, I can handle this stuff safely. I've got a double layer of latex gloves, safety glasses and clothes toed shoes, everything that I've been prepared for, uh, prepared with rather in my laboratory setting at work. Um, so yeah again don't try this at home. So at this point I'm going to wrap up the video and we're going to just chime in uh, every one or two days just on like a YouTube short, I'm guessing, because it wouldn't be long, it'd only be, you know, 20-30 seconds just to pull the bag out and take a look at the skillet real quick to see how the um, the, the healing process is, is progressing. So, that's all for tonight. Uh, thank you very, very much for watching. Hope you made it this far to the end of the video. And I really appreciate it if you guys support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more content. Take care.